Hello, everybody. So you can type where you're tuning in from. And we're here for a fun Halloween painting. I'm going to show you step by step how to do this. And you can change it up, of course, to any different colors. Maybe you want to add other things into the painting. You want to take out certain things. So it's you can um, change it up. Welcome. Hi, Donna. <clears throat> so I always have my primary colors in black and white. Thalo blue is good, too. Um, just the basics and I mix everything. If you have pre-mixed colors, you can use those. And some brushes. If you have an assortment of brushes, that works. I have some brushes that I always keep with me. So a large flat is what I'm gonna be mostly using for the background. And I have some more medium brushes and a detailed brush. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving in Canada. I know that for the Americans, not for another month and a bit. Nice, welcome. Okay, so there's exactly one now here. Um, I'll just wait like another two minutes. So get yourselves settled with your paints and some brushes, a water cup, a paper towel, maybe something to drink and snack on. and also a canvas, of course, or media art paper. Any size works, but I use a 16 by 20. And this will stay up. So you can watch it afterwards, or if you have to go, you can watch it later. And I'm uh, just curious if you guys have other ideas that you want to add to the painting. Or maybe you just want to keep it as is. Yes, this one's fun. Um, it looks complicated, but break it down. It's pretty easy when you break it down. Hi, Lori. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Let's just get started, and I'm, I believe you can actually pause and you can rewind on this live YouTube stream, which is great. A witch on a broomstick. That's actually a good addition. Okay, so I'm just going to move this to the side for now, and I'll bring it back up now and again. And we're going to start with some background colors. So we have to get our base coats. So I'm gonna use my large brush, dip it in your water, and then just dab it on your napkin. Cauldron, and I just did a painting with a cauldron yesterday, so don't really wanna do it again. So for the background, I start with a um, like a white circle just plain white, you're not gonna really see it. And the reason I add white first is because when I put uh, the blues and stuff around it, it kind of blends with the white and makes it look like it's glowing. You can place it anywhere you like. I kind of do it a bit more centered, but up on the top part of the painting on the canvas. So a little bit higher up, not in the middle, but centered higher up. And you can do this as big as you like because it's just white and it's going to be covered by darker colors. I'm just going to swirl this out. You can probably see it shiny on my, well, maybe not. It's not that noticeable. Bats, yes, I was, I was going to do bats. A 
Okay, so I have a large circle there. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how to make my blue. And my blue is um, it's more of a shale kind of gray blue. I don't do a very vibrant, bright blue because I want it to be kind of spooky and mysterious. So that's why you have to add black if you wanna make it like how I did it in the painting. So I'll show you in the painting again. You can see the blue that's going through it. That's um, a very grayish blue throughout most of the sky. So on my palette, I'm going to grab, to start, just a little dip of blue. We're gonna get, we're gonna gradually get darker. So just a little bit of blue and a big scoop of white. So you'll see it gets very bright. Very, very bright. And just a small little smidge of black. Just trying to be careful here because I'm using a big brush. So just with the corner, just wipe some of it off. And then you're gonna get more of a gray blue. You can add more blue if, it's, if you took too much black. Sometimes that happens. And you can add more white if you want it brighter. And then there is my bright, more gray blue. I like that idea, the zombie hand coming out of the ground. I like that. I don't know why I didn't do that. So I'm gonna start outside the circle and then you're going to drag it in. You're just gonna keep circling like this, press a bit lighter and then you're gonna get less of the paint on your brush going on the canvas, blending with the white and it just looks like it's getting brighter and brighter and it looks more like it's glowing, which is awesome. So I get this a little bit, I drag it out a little bit more until I'm happy with the amount that I have. Because I'm going to be dragging in the dark blue after this. And then I just wash off my brush And if you have um, too much swirls and it's too obvious, you want it a bit more glow looking, you're just gonna take some more white and then go from the middle out. You don't wanna start out and then in because you're just gonna keep dragging the blue into the center. So I'm gonna wash off my brush again. and switch now to a darker blue. So hopefully my pace is going pretty well. I know that you guys can pause, so that should be good if you need to take your time, you wanna spend a lot of time. We have a lot of different size canvases we're probably using. And to make the darker, you can wash off your brush. I'm just gonna take more blue. It's gonna be a lot darker, maybe a big scoop of it. Then I'm gonna take just um, another little dip of black. You can always add more. You don't wanna take too much. Then you have to make up for it and you have to pretty much start all over again. So you're gonna get, and I just mix it in the same spot because you need a touch of white to make it more gray. Otherwise, it's not gonna be a gray blue. So essentially you're making gray and then you're adding blue to make that gray blue. So that's pretty dark, I like that. Start with that, and then you can always adjust it um, afterwards if it's not to your liking. I'm just gonna start outside the circle. It's pretty dark. It's good. Just lightly press now. Press a little bit lighter, and it'll blend a lot better into your moon, the glowing moon, into the previous blue. And a little bit of water does help if, you're, if your brush is really dry. 
can help blend into the previous colors, make it a bit more smooth. Now, if you're wondering how much of this blue we're doing, I do um, just a little bit more white. I'm going to go, I'll show you a line. I'm just gonna make a bit of a curved line at the bottom. Right about here is good. So you can make your horizon line um, uneven or you can make it bumpy, you can make it straight and flat. I like to make it a little bit uneven. You can always adjust it. And I'm just gonna keep going with my circular motions through the rest of the sky in this dark gray blue. So just again, to mix it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need more blue, big scoop of that, and a little bit of white, not too much, otherwise it's gonna be really light. And then a dip of black or two dips, depending on how gray you want it to look. A little bit of water. You can even go really dark on the edges. You can go more black. You're just making more. Sometimes you have to keep making more. And I don't mind it being slightly different in color. Just adds to the different color in the sky and to the movement, I think. And hopefully the glow has worked out for you guys. It looks like a glowing moon. You can let me know. Try not to paint too fast so you guys can stay on pace with me. And if you're just tuning in as well and getting started, we started with a white circle for the center and then we went to, we're doing more of like a gray blue. So just a little bit of black added to our light blue to now a dark blue throughout the sky. Okay. And let me know if you are done with the sky. Well, we're not done with the sky, but we are done with this part of the sky and we're gonna be doing some 
clouds. I just washed off my brush. Awesome. So clouds will be pretty soon. Yay. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. I know that we have a lot of Canadians and Americans, so it's a very different time from Rome. Wow. Okay. Okay. So uh, the sky is done. Great. Oh, welcome to my first event, Allison. Um, we're going to be coming back to the sky. I just want it to dry, and I want it. What I want to do is I kind of want to just fill this in really quick, so that's drying too. And then jump back into the sky and do the clouds because it should be dry. You don't really want to work on the clouds when it's really wet in your sky. You might just pull off the paint. That's okay if it's a bit damp. We'll get back to that. So now for the bottom, it's going to be more of like a brown, which I'll show you. So dark brown with some highlights. And I just start with a dark brown. And I make it look like it's got some uneven terrain and I don't know, just really weird stuff. It's got some roots in it. You can change it up. You could put more grass, but I want it to be more spooky looking. So to make brown, if you have premixed brown, just use that. Trust me and add some black. Um, otherwise, you can mix it with me. It's uh, got an interesting ratio. It's mixed, you have to mix all the colors together, but at a certain ratio. I'm just gonna take a bunch of yellow, so a couple scoops of it. And then you're going to take a scoop of red. So you'll notice that it's gonna be very red orange, even though you took more yellow. Maybe a little bit more red to be a red orange. And then to make it black, it's gonna either take blue or black or sorry, to make a brown, you take blue or black. So I'm just gonna take a little scoop of black and now it's gonna be a dark brown, like a nice chestnut brown. It's pretty dark. And if you want, if it's too dark, just add a little touch of white. And then you have a brown. If it's too yellowy green looking, you need more red. So you can always add a bit more red to warm it up. If it's too purpley red looking, just add some more yellow. And then you should have your brown. So I'm going to just do um, a basic fill kind of towards the bottom. I'm just going back and forth, but I like to do kind of like wavy lines a bit to make it look bumpy already in the bottom. So to make it look a little bit more bumpy on the bottom, it's just making those wavy kind of lines. And maybe you can see a little bit of those weird bumps those streaks. So that's, that's what I did. And then I just kind of highlighted and streaked in some more afterwards. So I'm just making more brown again. Again, you want to make a red orange first and then add some black or blue to it. It will be brown. You make it bumpy on the top of the horizon.
There, very simple built in. And washing off my brush, and this should be a bit more dry. It's still a bit damp, but that's fine for the, the clouds because it can blend a bit with it too. I'm still using my large brush. I just washed it off and dabbed it on my paper towel. And who's up to pace with me? Curious. The clouds are also optional, but I think it adds an interesting look. I don't, when I first made this, it kind of um, started off as clouds and it actually sort of looks like they could be part of the tree leaves in a way, the way that I positioned them. So, I mean, it could be either or, but I liked, I like the clouds. Okay. So for the clouds, um, a large, you can actually use a round brush too, or a filbert, which I'll show you again. So something like these, if you wanted to. Um, okay. I actually stick with um, the pretty much the same color as I did with the sky. It's kind of interesting because it's, the same color, so how you're gonna really see it, you can with the different strokes and the way that you're making the texture of it. So I'm going to just take um, a bit of some white. You can actually put it back over top of your previous mixed color and just revive it basically. And a touch of black, more gray blue. So if it's too gray, just add more blue. It is um, slightly different in color but you know, all the same, kind of the same ratio. It's maybe start off a little bit brighter and then you'll see it really well against the background. So you can see compared to this one, I went a little bit brighter. You can add a bit more white basically. So that's, that's what you can do. And then once you have some paint on your brush, I'm going to start wherever you want to put these clouds. My tree is going to be here, so I'm going to Start right there, you can sort of see it. And all I'm doing is little kind of um, round, very circular strokes, make them mimic the fluffy look and just light tapping and dabbing around the moon. So it's gonna have lots of different shapes. You don't wanna do it so that it's a straight line. You wanna make it look like some parts are a little bit more fluffy than others. So I'm just hoping that you guys can see it. It's pretty close in color. And I actually followed it up to the top here. I'm gonna go a little bit brighter so you can see as well. And um, also what I did, you can start with that one color. You don't have to worry about anything else, but if you add a bit more white, you get it even lighter. A little bit dabbed on your napkin. You don't need too much paint. And then you're going to just go over the top parts, lightly dabbing with little paint to brighten up the clouds that are closest to the moon. And it looks like it's glowing. And then the ones, and then on the bottom part, it looks like it's darker and more shadowed. So I'm gonna brighten this up so you guys can see it a lot better too, what it's gonna start looking like. And you're not supposed to overthink this step. Um, clouds are very random. Yeah, 
Yes, we're just going to, okay, so we're working on the clouds and um, you can actually pause this video on your end. So I'll bring it up a bit closer. So hopefully you can see it a bit better. And I'll just take a little bit of a pause as requested to let you guys start with that before we build on it just um, a little bit more. So it looks like it's getting a bit darker, kind of like how we did with the background with the dark gray blue. So how are the clouds going for you guys? Is it easy to do? It's not supposed to be an overthinking step, but if you have less paint on the brush, it should work out pretty well. Okay, so I'm hoping to continue on with building up on the clouds. And it's good to let, if you're trying to do a highlight um, towards the, the moon on the very edges here, when it's dry, you can see a lot better. So what I do is I just take some darker gray blue now, like the sky, some blue, black, and not as much white, so it gets darker. And you can make it look like it's kind of fading into your background color because it's essentially the same color. I just go on the outer sides, just makes them look more fluffy again, a bit thicker. You could go really dark, you can make it really dark blue. So just dabbing and just lightly dabbing into the rest of the cloud. Yes, this is posted for later. Okay, good. And things can be adjusted too, if you need to um, blend between some dark and light colors, you just add 
go back to a more in between kind of gray blue. So it's not as dark as right here, but not as light over here. That's okay. Yeah, you can come back and work on it later. And if you're done with the clouds, let me know. If you've waited for the clouds to dry kind of near the top, you could just do a little bit of a highlight. Sometimes taking a step back and looking at your painting really helps you decide um, if you need to go a bit brighter so it stands out a bit more. I'm just gonna take a bit, washed off my brush and taking a bit of a white and some just a little touch of blue to make it really light gray blue. Or you could just add more white to your gray blue. A lot of things can work. Not too much paint, just dabbing some of it off. It is supposed to be spooky. It's going to be spooky, more spooky than this. There, you can see all of those clouds. I just made it kind of wrapping around. You can drag the clouds out to the very edge of your canvas. There's just unlimited possibilities for your clouds if you want to add some on the other side. And just type in chat if you are done with the clouds, maybe you need to stop. You're like, I need to stop playing around with it. I'm just gonna drag my clouds to the edge on that top corner. Go a bit darker. Hi, I feel like I have some people who joined me last time. All right. Thanks, Allison. <laughs> Okay, some people are done. I'm great, how are you? Um, so making sure that this is pretty much dry. It can be a little bit damp because it doesn't matter if it mixes with some of the colors that you put as highlights. It can blend a bit easier, but you don't want it to be obviously as wet. So sometimes it's good to take a break from your clouds, especially if you want things to dry and you wanna adjust anything. Um, if you're trying to make things a bit more white, so if you're trying to go a bit more lighter on the edges here, sometimes if you just take white and do it, it, it just spreads the paint around. So I'm going to wait for that to dry for another couple of minutes before I make it a little bit lighter around the edges, and then I will be good. Great. Not a nice Halloween night of painting. So I'm going to now... Um, Switch from my large to, you can use a smaller, more detailed brush. So you can use something like this, or you can use a square flat. It's just smaller than my large one. Um, so it's not as, it's not gonna be as thick when I do the lines for the streaks down here. And also my trees. So what I like to do is take a little dip of water 
dab it on my napkin. And then I'm going to just take some black. Um, it's actually posted now. So in some, even you can actually trace back and start from the beginning now if you wanted. You could save the link. And um, it's just, it's already posted. So I have black on my medium. And I just flattening it down. So I just press with my brush against my palette so it stays a bit thinner. And I'm gonna use the thin side of it so that I get a straight, more of like a thin line instead of the flat side. So what you could do is just, you might not see it too much in a dark brown, but with this black, I'm just going over some lines where I kind of see some creases where I want it to be a bit more shadowed. Kind of anywhere, anywhere you put it will be a shadow. So it adds to the texture of the ground. It's really kind of cool. And I'm just gonna keep going. So that's just black. You can do as much or as little as you like. And before I add a highlight, I actually add a couple of different highlights in there. We'll just wait for that to dry and then soon we will start with our trees. And while I wait for everyone to finish that, you can also let me know in chat as well. I'm just going to touch up my light areas up here, the little highlights that I wanted towards the moon. Just a little bit of white, dab it off on my napkin so it's not too much paint. Just dabbing. It really, really pops it out, I find. I think it makes a huge difference when you do this. And now it looks very cloud-like, I find. Even when I made this in the original, um, the clouds are a little bit different in that one than this one. Clouds are random and however you want to make them. And if this is your first time painting or joining us, let me know. Hi, welcome. And I'll just bring this up a little bit closer so you can see some of those dab techniques I was talking about. Makes it look very fluffy and kind of um, like a feathery kind of thing going on. you. All right. Seeing how we're doing. And seeing if my pace is okay. Who's ready for trees? And the trees are really easy because they're more in the distance. 
along the horizon line here. And there's not much detail to put. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks so much, divine. Trees, okay. So I'm gonna take black and I'm using my square. So I'm just gonna take black and I flattened it down. So I'm gonna use the thin side of the edge and then I'm going to, on the sides, I'd like to make them look like they're a little bit taller here and then they go a little bit shorter, kind of like it has like a, like a curve look. I'm just going to do, there you go, you can see it, perfect, awesome. I was worried because it's on a dark background. So I'm starting with that. And I'm going to start making like, I'm just gonna show you a tree and then we're just gonna keep doing the same thing kind of over and over again. So it kind of looks like a Y in a way. You can switch to a smaller brush if you wanted. For those steps. And then uh, I just keep building onto it. You can do a little branch off of this one. Just press really light. And most of the branches are, you can do them kind of curly, not curly, like um, swirly and a bit wavy. So it looks like they're blowing in the wind. So you can see a little bit of those wavy sort of lines on some of them. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to do another one here. Just press a little bit harder at the bottom to make more of a trunk. And I'm just going to keep getting shorter and shorter. Until you want to stop. I stopped. Yeah, this is fine. Right around here. You do some in trees in between. So you have some more like a forest. So if you fill it up more. It looks more like a forest in the background. So they're just like five trees in a line. And um, yeah, I'm just going to keep going with my branches. So if you want them to all kind of be blowing one way, so maybe you have some blowing all this way, have some movement and direction. But what I do is just sort of these wavy lines I was talking about, add some uniqueness and more gnarly look in the background. So I'm just going to keep going. You can have overlap. Don't be afraid to overlap. lots of branches and press really light and you have a forest. There we go. I think I'm good with that. If you wanted to, a little extra thing you can add is, I'm gonna take some more black. From the very edge, you can make it look like there's you know some more trees going beyond the canvas, life beyond the canvas, and they're sticking out through the side. 
So some longer branches coming out. Just adds to the look. Thanks, we're making a Halloween painting. A little bit mysterious and spooky. So I'll bring it up a little bit closer again. Just let me know in chat how the trees are working out for you. I know trees can be hard, but these I find really easy because they're not as detailed and the branches can be just wavy lines and they look like they're blowing in the wind, um, kind of gnarly. And then I'm going to add some kind of misty fog on the bottom. It's really fun. Not now when it's dry. Hey, you know what? That could be a thing. That's That just adds to the whole Halloween look. That's probably a happy mistake. If it's, you know, it looks like corn stalks, sure, just let them be like that. Thanks. We paint, um, well, I paint live at least once a week. Painting again on the 13th, and actually I'm doing The Mandalorian uh, November 1st, live on YouTube if you're interested. So if you're a fan, we can paint it together. We have it posted on our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham Region. Okay, so who's ready to move on to um, we're going to wait for this to dry, this black, a little bit before we do the mist and fog in the background. So I'm going to do a couple more highlights now in the, the ground. And then we'll soon get to the tree. The tree is really gnarly. Well, it could be more gnarly. It depends on how, how detailed you want to go. Okay, that's okay, you can watch from the start. Yep, you can go back, pause. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to my square. Dabbing it on my napkin so it's not too, just wanna get all the excess water out. And for your highlights in the ground, um, you don't need to go wild, but you could. It just adds to the texture of it. You could do um, a bit of a highlight thing going on. You can take the color from your sky. It doesn't have to be, it can be light, it can be dark, and you can streak it in so it looks like it's reflecting into the ground as well. So that's something I'm going to do, but um, for a lighter brown, I'm going to take basically the same colors to make brown. So I'm gonna start with my yellow and a little dip of red to make that red orange. Some white and a little touch of black. Might need a bit more white and some red. I like things to be a bit warmer looking rather than more yellow, even though the yellow could be still warm, but I like it more red warm. And you could use that, you could add more white. So something lighter like this. And I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm just going, I'm following along my 
black lines a little bit. So I'm not going right over top of them. And it looks like the black is more of a shadow. So if you go more on the top part of your black, it makes it look like it's shadowed underneath it. I'm just going to do a little bit here. I don't want to go overboard. Just don't want to distract people from everything else that's going on because there's a lot going on already. So maybe I'll just switch to that slightly darker brown. Yes, I will suggest the paints and brushes in just a second. So this brown, a bit more toned down, not as bright. Still adding the texture. Really fun. So the paints that I use are Start Acrylic from Curry's. And I know Curry's is not everywhere, um, but it's a good student grade and it's, um, it's not too thick and it's not too thin. I find it works really well. Also brushes, you could get Princeton set brushes also from Curry's. I have, I always like to have a flat brush. Um, you can use a filbert, that's a flat one as well. A round one is good for certain, maybe like fluffy, kind of like the clouds, you could use that. And a large flat, I like to use just for a lot of background fill. And of course a detailed brush. You can have a couple different sizes. Now also, for the ground, if you wanted to add a bit of that blue that I was talking about, it's, again, the same sky color. You can go lighter, you can go darker. Try it out, see if you like it. If you don't, just let it dry and then just go back over the brown and it's gone. Really easy. I'm gonna make another sky color again. Blue, white and just a little dip of black. Just add some in if you want. So it's a good highlight from the sky. But I just, I like adding in, it's optional. You don't have to do this. And you see it's a lot of streaks and adds to the texture. I think I'll stop there and you can tone it down with some more brown. If you did too much blue or you did too thick, much like too much thick blue into the ground, you can just take your brown And I'm going to just go over some of the blue, tones it down. A bit more subtle. Okay, and I'm just wondering who's ready for the mist I put in the fog right down here around the trees. 
in the background. Ready for mist, awesome. Okay, so I'll show you the, I haven't showed the painting in a little bit, so I'll show it again. And so we have a lot of it done. We just have to do, I do a subtle sweep across the bottom with some kind of fog and mist. And I also do a little bit down here in front of the tree, but that's afterwards if you want to as well. Now the brush that you're going to be using, I like to use my large. And you're going to use a dry brush technique. So that means um, just wash it off and dab it on your napkin so it's not, it doesn't have too much water in it. And you want it to be a bit more transparent looking. So you're going to wipe off a lot of the paints from your brush um, and just press really lightly. So it's more of a dry, uh, dry brush technique. So I'm going to, it's actually very similar to the gray blue color. Just a little bit of white with your gray blue. If you were using it in the bottom here, you just add a bit more white or just make it again, some blue, some white and a touch of black. I'm gonna wipe off some of this paint from my brush on my napkin and so I have very little on it now. Just test it out, lightly go across. You can, if you press too hard, it's gonna be really thick. It's just gonna be a blue line, but if you go a little bit lighter, it becomes more transparent. So you can still see through it. And it looks like it's kind of blowing away. Go right up to the line here, the horizon line. You can go high up you can go a little bit higher to make it look like it's going up higher until it reaches the branches and that is my misty fog there very lightly press and um little paint on your brush. I really like that. I like adding mist and fog in a lot of different paintings. And then we can get started on our tree. The tree is fun, more detailed than the ones we did in the background. And uh, the brushes you can use, you can use a filbert. I like to start with more of a round and also square flat. Uh, a detailed brush is good for the smaller branches, more details, of course. But start with something a bit bigger because we're going to do more of the trunk work and up into the stretching up to the sky, the main branches, before we could do smaller ones. Hi, welcome. So I'm going to use my more rounder one right now, dip in my water, and hopefully we are ready for that. It's going to take black. You could do a very dark brown if you wanted. I'm just going to do black because I add um, streaks into it, which I'll show you. So you see these highlights? I just add highlights of brown kind of like down here and some light blue as well for highlights on the tree. And the black silhouette of the tree looks like it's not so much as a silhouette anymore but it has more shadow and then it has highlights on the opposite side facing the moon. So I'm gonna take black and my medium, a little bit of water, keeps the paint a bit more consistent. 
I'm going to plant it right around here. I want to make it kind of bendy and weird, gnarly. So very over-exaggerated. Started with a line and then I'm going to just make it a bit thicker at the bottom. You can always make it thicker uh, um, after you do this, but just make it thicker at the bottom where the trunk is and just keep it thinner on the edge. So you can, or on the ends, you can just press harder and I'm just going to fill this in. And these roots, you can actually blend them kind of into the ground here. But I'm gonna be putting a lot of mist and fog at the bottom anyway, so you're not gonna see it. But that's just an idea if you're doing something different. Now, if you're doing more of a gnarly tree look, make it bumpy. Make it look bumpy and not as smooth. So you can just go along the line here and just make it imperfect and more bumpy along the edges. And it looks like when we do the highlights, it's going to have more texture in there. And some more black and now we're going to start branching out. You can do your branches however you want to do them. I'm going to do more weird bumps and curves in it. Again, it adds that gnarly look that I'm going for in the Halloween look. So you can see that weird little dips and some waves, kind of like how we did down here. Still using the same brush because I, I can press really light and I can still get a thinner line, which you could use a smaller brush for if you're not confident with your um, skills with larger brushes. Making it look like it's wrapping around the moon a little bit so that my moon's not completely covered. Don't forget branches on the other side of the tree. You can have like a little branch coming out Kind of cool. I think um, I might be a couple more branches and then that's it for me. I'm going to stop before I go crazy. Okay. 
And I can't wait to see the results. If you want to post them on our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham Region, um, in the event, maybe you can private message us. You can send, you can show it to us if you don't want to show it to everybody else. And let me know how the tree is going. That's okay, you can trace back or you can wait till the end and watch out a little ring and it's gonna stay up. So we're actually getting close. Uh, we just have to do some details on our tree to make it look like it has a lot of texture in it. And the pumpkins, some mist and fog, and then our ghosts, the spooky ghosts. Now, if you're ready for the details on the tree, we can get started. I mostly do, again, um, that blue from the background in the sky, like a reflection, and also some lighter brown. Basically, what's down here. So you could do that, just like how I'm going to do that. I still have some of that light, lighter brown left over. I'm gonna use my flat square. I'm just gonna grab my brown. You can test it out if you wanna go darker, just add more black. If you wanna go lighter, you know, add more white. It's okay if it's still a bit wet as well, because it'll just um, blend with some of the black so it's not overpowering I guess and I do wavy keeping with those wavy lines it's very subtle as you can see maybe go a little bit brighter so you can see it a bit better see mostly towards where the moon is facing it adds a lot more texture more subtle. Maybe I'll add a bit more white so it gets a bit brighter. Right up into the branches at the top. Just taking some more, adding some more white to my lighter brown. You can use a smaller brush So you see those little lines, makes it look more textured. There. Now maybe some light blue as well. 
well, not just light blue, but your light gray blue. That is in a little extra addition, blue, white, touch of black. Not gonna go too much with this, it's pretty light. Adding to the spooky theme. So, after the tree highlights, We're going to work on some pumpkins and fog and then the ghosts. And I already saw some ideas. Maybe you guys will be doing like a zombie hand coming out from the ground. Maybe a witch. Cauldron instead of pumpkins. Love to see the results. And pumpkins, they're, they're pretty easy because they're very circular and just got a couple lines for some bumpiness added to it. Who's ready for pumpkins? I'll be using my smaller, more detailed brush. And I'm going to start with a light orange. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna start with a light orange, yellow, and some, just a little dip of red because we already know by making brown, when you add so much red, it's gonna be really red orange. And if you like the scarlet pumpkin look, you can, you can do that, you can make it more red. You can change up the colors. Otherwise, add more yellow if it's too red for you or add more red if it's too too much yellow. And I'll just a little dip of white, not too much white, otherwise it will go really peach. So you're just gonna get a brighter orange to start. Brighter orange, kind of looks like a cheesy color. Place them wherever you want to place them. You can do as much as you like, maybe you just wanna do one doesn't matter. I'm going to do maybe one just peak booing up here. But I like to do almost like a, like a heart has like a little bump at the top and you, I'm putting it behind one of my uh, little, you know, the branches that are coming down from the roots of the, the roots of the tree and putting it behind. And just fill it in. I like to fill it in rounded so it's coming up from the top to the bottom. Okay. 
That's just one color. I'm gonna grab some more. Excuse me. And another one, so this is gonna be much closer. I'm going to make it a lot bigger. So I put it yeah, right around here. It's kind of more, yeah, right here is good. Almost looks like a bit like an apple shape. White and yellow. Very rounded. And just fill it in from the center here. Make it a bit more rounded looking just by following around the groove of the pumpkin. So it adds to the, the circular shape. If you need to do a second coat, just wait for it to dry, go over it again, it'll be more orange. And my last pumpkin, I did it sticking out on the corner here. Right there, kind of looks like a heart shape. That's another way to describe them. And just fill it in. I did about three, you can do more, you can make it more of a pumpkin patch scene. I'm gonna wait for that to dry for a minute before I do my second coat. But my second coat, I'm gonna be adding a couple different oranges on top so that it's not just a flat color. That's okay. If you have to pause, that's okay. This will be up basically forever. And um, if you guys want to add more details onto it, which I, I'm gonna wait for it to dry for another minute and see if anybody needs to catch up. Who's adding different stuff? Who's adding like the, the zombie hand coming up from the ground? Maybe you're doing some uh, gravestones, tombstones, witch, cauldron. Curious to see. Ooh, a gravestone, nice. I like that idea. Okay, keep throwing me ideas if you're if you're doing something different. I like to hear your ideas. So now I'm going to do basically a second coat. I'm just going to adjust the orange. Maybe make it a bit more of a red orange this time. Not too red, but you know, just a little bit different. And I'm just gonna go over my pumpkins, start from, just make them a bit rounder looking, right? That's just building onto it. And if you actually go to a brown, kind of like a darker brown, which we made before. So we should be pros at it at this point. You can make those the lines coming out to 
I over exaggerate the bumpiness of it. Also that little stem sticking out from the top, I just did in the same brown. Goes into the pumpkin just a little bit. You can shape them however you like to. You can make them small or whatever. It's looking more like a pumpkin now. And again, I'm going to be putting mist over top of a lot of this area. So it looks like it's kind of misty and foggy around the pumpkins. So you're going to cover a little bit of it. And if you're still doing the pumpkins with me, maybe you're doing your own thing. I know a lot of people wanted to do their own thing. Yellow and some white with a little touch of red making it more of like a, just a small little touch of red. It's kind of like a golden color. So it's not too yellow, not too yellow looking. And it's just more golden in the color. Softer yellow, basically. Touch of red makes it more golden. And now I'm just going to highlight more on the tops of my pumpkin. Bit of a highlight. And it has now a lot of texture and depth into it just by doing that. Maybe a little bit on the side of the stem and that's it. So any other details you wanna add, if you wanna take some black, add it into some of the creases accent it a bit more you could See, but I can't see your progress so far. And I think I'll just add a couple little more highlights on the tree for some bit more texture while I wait for that to dry for a minute. You can type in chat if you are um, done with the pumpkins or whatever you're doing. And then we can start very shortly on our mist and fog at the very bottom before the ghosts.
I think the tree is fun. Just makes it look really more 3D and has more depth into it just from doing those streaky lines through it. Now for the kind of the foggy look at the bottom, I switched to a larger brush again, and this should be really easy to do because all you're doing is the same kind of technique as the sky with the clouds. So all those little dabs and those um, kind of circular motions with, we, we did with the brush, it makes it look more fluffy and very little paint this time. So they look like it's a bit more transparent. You can kind of see through it a bit. You can do white if you want, but I'm gonna do my ghosts white. And um, I don't wanna kind of mix it up with too much of my fog. I want it to be standing out just a little bit more. So I'm going to take just a little touch of water on my brush and just dab it on my napkin. Take some white and take a little dip of blue. Get a nice light blue. Touch of black, using a lot of the same colors in this painting. It's very, feels like it's really monochromatic. So I think that is good. Thanks, Sanjaya, Sanjana. Yeah. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm just dabbing it off so it's not too much paint in my brush. I want it to be a bit more of a dry brush technique and um, a bit more transparent looking so it's not too heavy with the paint. Test it out, comes off a little bit thick. So I'm going to go touch more black and um, not as not super bright, just dabbing it off again. There's so much paint in the brush when I mixed it. I'm just gonna dab and do some circular, soft circular motions. You can go up the tree to make it look like it's got some height going. If it's too blue, just add some more um, black to it. So you can still see through it a little bit, I find. Lightly press, do some circular, soft circular motions. You can cover your pumpkin at the bottom a little bit if you want to do that. Make it look a bit more smoky and wispy. So you can see I'm like pressing a bit harder and hardly any paint's coming off. So that's what you want. You want very little paint. Maybe a little bit more, now that I'm looking at it. And just take a step back, look at your painting. Um, 
doing just that one color, you might like it as is, but I like to just kind of like the clouds, take a bit of white afterwards, wipe some of it off and do a little bit of highlights in the misty fog that we just created with very little paint again. So just in some spots. So it's like you're making, it's almost like you're creating layers. So it looks like some are going up higher than others. You have some layers of the mist. There, a bit more depth in there, I think. So you can add as much as you like. And all we have to do are the ghosts. So what did we think of this painting so far? Not as hard as we thought. Maybe some of you are actually still taking your time. That's okay with previous steps. And the ghosts, I'm going to show you again. I mean, you can do different types of ghosts. I just did really simple kind of spirit looking ones. going to wash off my brush really well and just make sure that things are pretty dry before you do the ghost because they're in white and again they're a bit transparent I didn't do them so solid it's gonna if you do it really solid and white it's very just not as realistic even though it's not a realistic thing to, to put in a painting but it's Bit more transparency is nice to have and it's not too stark white which i don't really like too much in paintings too much white is um, not very natural okay just seeing how this is it's actually pretty dry because i did a when you do the very light paint, transparent, and dry brush technique, it dries pretty fast, which is good. And I think we're ready for the ghosts now. So I'm gonna use my more rounder medium brush. You can use also just your smaller one. I'm gonna take plain white. I'm gonna coat it on my brush. And then I'm going to, again, wipe off a lot of the paint onto a napkin so it's not too thick, which I gave like a whole speech about how I don't like things being too white. So I'm just wiping some of it off and it's not as heavily coated. Just test it out. Let's start with um, some, it's gonna have a kind of like a more alien head top, more round, and then just make it wavy. Just make it look like it's thinning out. Just make it a bit bigger too if it's too thin. Make it a bit wider. 
and I thin it out on the tail. And of course, I'm going to make some arms, which you can switch to a smaller brush if you haven't yet. So right around here, where I feel like some arms would be So you'll still see a little bit of the background through it. That's pretty much it for the ghosts before I do the face. Wiping some more paint off. It did an intertwine look to it. Great. So you know, if you're watching and learning, helps helps you get an idea for when you actually paint. And I just did one more peeking up from the front. Odd numbers are nice to have, maybe right here. Much bigger because it's in front and uh, closer to you. So you can make it much bigger than the ones that are a bit further back. And then we can make the fun faces. So I'm just gonna take black on my more detailed brush, a little bit of water and some black paint. Okay, do your faces however you wish. You can make them fun, you can make them scary and spooky, angry. I'm just gonna do more oval shapes, I guess, for this one. Kind of typical. Here. Maybe this one. A little bit, I don't know, kind of the same, more oval shape. You can make them bigger eyes or they don't have to be perfect. It adds to the mysterious look of them. And I just did these ones kind of like, he's like a bit of a frowny guy. Just a bit of an open mouth like he's Sad. And this guy, much bigger eyes, closest to you. So if you want to add bats or cauldron, 
stuff like that. Hi, welcome. But that should be pretty much, I already had a lot of stuff and if you, you can keep going. Just thought that it was many, many things to put into a painting. I think bats are nice to add, adds to the spooky look, I think. So post your results on our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham Region, and um, you can let me know how it went for you. You can join us for more live events. They are always saved afterwards. So you can always watch them after. We have lots of events coming up in The Mandalorian if you're a fan. So we're going to do that right here on our Facebook YouTube channel. Oh, sorry, our YouTube channel, not Facebook YouTube channel, but YouTube. Okay, so thanks for joining, and maybe I'll have you paint with me again. <laughs>